Oppenheimer has everything you could have hoped for. The biggest A-list cast ever assembled by Christopher Nolan. I'm gonna tell you why that was a genius move. Also, a troubled enigmatic protagonist, sex, and the atomic bomb. But will this movie finally get Christopher Nolan that Oscar that he so deserves? Will this be a crowd pleaser? I'm gonna tell you everything about it. In this movie, Christopher Nolan delivers a mesmerizing cinematic experience that delves into the life of brilliant father of the atomic bomb, J. Robert Oppenheimer. Few people laughed, few people cried, most people were silent. Now I am become death, the destroyer of worlds. Nolan's unique style weaves a tale of ambition, scientific brilliance, and moral dilemmas, and despite this being a biopic, the film successfully balances personal insights with historical accuracy. Killian Murphy's portrayal of Oppenheimer is transformative. This is a tour de force. This is the role he was born to play. He skillfully captures the physicist's brilliance and passion for scientific discovery and the eventual turmoil and guilt he feels after completing the creation of the atomic bomb. He has a phenomenal face and a set of blue eyes that can pierce right through you and see all the way through the creation of the universe and beyond. But Killer Murphy is not alone in this movie. Robert Downey Jr.'s portrayal of Levi Strauss is a standard in the film. He masterfully embodies Strauss with a mix of ambition and also political savvy. And together with Murphy, they create this engaging dynamic full of tension, depth, and, and also resentment. I can definitely smell an Oscar coming for this too. Of course, as you may very well know, this movie has an extraordinary cast full of A-list actors. It really feels like the Avengers of Hollywood fame assembled when Christopher Nolan called upon them. But why did Nolan cast so many famous and recognizable faces? Let me give you my two cents. The movie is filled with historical characters that interact with Oppenheimer and the Manhattan Project. It is important for the audience to remember them as they play pivotal roles at different times in the movie, and also they come and go at different times without notice. It will be really hard to ask viewers to remember names like Leslie Groves, Roger Robb, Niels Bohr, Ernest Lawrence, etc, etc, etc. Instead, audiences can go, oh yeah, the guy played by Matt Damon, or Josh Harnett, or Emily Blunt, or Florence Pugh, or Jack Quaid, or Josh Peck, etc, etc, etc. It is a genius move that will make sure audiences are following the story without getting any lost. Now, Oppenheimer keeps falling short of perfection because Christopher Nolan keeps committing the same mistake as he has in the past. The dialogue keeps getting overpowered by the sound design and the score. The romantic relationships feel cold and rigid. There is no fire in them. You don't believe there's love between Emily Blunt and Killian Murphy. You also don't believe the sexual attraction between Florence Pugh and him. More about the sex scene in a moment. I also didn't really believe Oppenheimer as a womanizer. I don't think Killian Murphy pulled that off. The sex scenes are not depicted in an erotic way, more as calculating and devoid of real passion. They are also filled with shame and guilt, but Florence Pugh really shows she is a fearless actress because not every actress or even actor will play those scenes in front of so many people and being so vulnerable. It is something that you have to see to believe. It will make you like gasp. Also, for some weird reason, and I know this is gonna be very divisive, Nolan makes the artistic choice of not showing the Japanese tragedy of Hiroshima and Nagasaki in any meaningful way. And this is necessary for us to connect with Oppenheimer's guilt after dropping the bomb. So thankfully, Murphy is a great actor and he brings us with him, but I think this could feel disrespectful for some Asian audiences, especially because so many of them have close relatives related to that tragedy. And seeing this on the big screen is surely gonna hit some strings on their hearts. But what about the atomic bomb, the biggest selling point in this movie? Everyone is dying to see the kiloton explosion on the big screen, on the IMAX screen. And I know more than one are salivating at the idea that Nolan said that he didn't use any CGI in the whole movie. So did it work? How did he do it? Was it satisfactory? Well, it looks like Nolan used a combination of chemical techniques and pyrotechnics to create this mega bang. But at the end of the day, honestly, I think he should have used CGI. The huge moment just feels like a recreation of the bomb and not like the real thing. And also because Nolan decided to use almost complete silence during the moments, I'm afraid to say that it was a little underwhelming. And I know many film aficionados won't ever admit to that. And it will be like committing a cinematic sin. So 
This may make or break the movie for some people because about three quarters of the film are all about reaching the explosive moment and three quarters of the film feel like a ticking clock to experience what we all imagine will be a visual spectacle of the ones that we've never seen before. But then that moment gets here and then poof, it's gone. Now, because much of the movie feels like it is about the creation of the bomb, you will be surprised to know that after the bomb explodes, there are still about 30 minutes left on the movie and this is where the movie starts feeling long, like it overstays its welcome. In the age of TikTok and two generations suffering from attention deficit disorder, this movie will feel as challenging as the Manhattan Project for some. In conclusion, Christopher Nolan's Oppenheimer detonates a massive A-list cast, Killian Murphy's transformative portrayal, and Robert Downey Jr.'s standout performance. They just don't make movies like this anymore. Oppenheimer was a risky project for Nolan and may eventually become his magnum opus. This will surely garner many, many Oscar nominations for the people in front and behind the camera. And you know what? They totally deserve it. So this has been my review for this massive movie that we were all so excited and waiting for it. And I think it's a worthy experience. Of course, you don't want to miss it. Are you crazy? And if you have seen the movie, let me know what you think in the comments below. And as always, I'll see you on the next one.